Hi, my name is Paige. Welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to come to you with a tag that I was tagged in by Dini over at Dini Books and Gaming. She tagged me in the uh, booktuber at the gym tag. So basically it's a series of questions um, relating to workout equipment in the gym or just like workout methods. So I won't be doing any working out in this video, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this video. But since it is October and it is spooky month, aka my favorite time of the year literally ever, I wanted to decorate my desk for you guys. So I'm going to quickly give you a tour of my desk um, before we get into the tag. So basically it's the same old, same old, except new books to fit the fall theme. So we have a variety of books. We have The Lemon Collie Life of Anne Oster. We have The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Illuminate, The Martian, The Gates, After the Fire, The Afterlife of Holly Chase, etc. And then we have this huge cat statue who is taking the place of my actual cats, which if you have seen my other videos, you know that my cat likes to be on my desk. But this is kind of um, her replacement. She is over there currently sitting in a box. But anyway, so we have this little pumpkin um, little bowl. I have a lot of mounds in there because that's all the candy I have right now. But I am planning on stocking up a little bit more. We have this gorgeous little pumpkin candle that my grandma got for me, I think at Marshall's. And under it, my normal candle, which is a London scented candle that I got from Bath and Body Works. But... We also have a little cat up here. I don't know if you can see him, but I got him at Target and he's very cute. Yeah, so we have him up there. Um, we also have a little card that Emily got for me, my friend Emily. So I put that up there as decoration. And, you know, some up other little things that are kind of about that maybe you can pick up on during the video. But anyway, now that that Halloween tour is over, and obviously we have the... Uh, the pumpkin lights to accompany my regular fairy lights but anyway now that that is done it's time to get into the tag so the first prompt is bench press so it says gives you the chance to show off and basically the question is what book are you proud of having read and ironically um i just finished the shining by stephen king uh that will be my wrap-up for this month and i'm hoping to do a spooky wrap-up so for this month my goal is to read basically only mystery thriller horror books and then have like a big spooky um wrap-up or maybe i'm in costume or something at the end of this month so look forward to that but that is a book that I am proud to have read because I've been wanting to read it for a really long time. I grew up watching The Shining and I'm proud to have finally read it and also to have finished basically like a full length novel by Stephen King because I did read The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon and it was a very good book but it was a very short one, practically a novella for Stephen King. So that's one that I'm really proud to have read and also I am proud to have read The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Um, I feel like it's one of those like fantasy classics and I didn't know if I was going to enjoy it and lo and behold it's like one of my favorite fantasy novels ever now probably in my top three so yeah that's how much I love that book and I'm really proud that I finally got to it and I'm proud that I actually enjoyed it so those are my answers for the first one so the second one is leg day so lots of people like to skip leg day I guess and what book genre author have you skipped because you didn't think you could handle it or do you wish you had skipped um so I kind of ignored the had wish you had skipped part because I've already made a video about books I don't like popular books anyway and you can find that video up here if you're interested in those books um, so for the purpose of this question I decided to go with books that I just haven't read because I'm scared of them so I don't, I usually tend to avoid books that I feel like will make me sad, if you know what I mean. So basically, Never Fade by uh, Alexandra Bracken, and that is the second book in the uh, Darkest Minds series that she did. So I read The Darkest Minds, I enjoyed it. Um, I won't say it's like my favorite YA novel because it's just not, but I enjoyed it. And then the ending made me like really scared to continue on, so I just you know avoided it because I don't want to be hurt um and at this point it's been so long since I read the first book that I just don't know if I ever will but anyway the second book I thought of was The Cruel Prince um so this will be The Wicked King I'm afraid to read The Wicked King because I was spoiled for something and um I did really enjoy The Cruel Prince it took me a while to get into it but once I did I was like pretty sold on it 
and knowing what I know or kind of know about the second book I'm scared of being hurt by it so I'm just like avoiding it and that doesn't mean I don't have it in fact it's it's right here look at him look how pretty he is um, and it's even the exclusive edition, but I'm just too scared to pick it up right now. Although, I have been having a craving for Fae-related stories lately, um, so I might end up picking it up pretty soon, and you'll be hearing me cry about it in probably a couple months. So the third question relates to crunches. I'm trying to remember what crunches are. Anyway, the prompt is, we all know crunches are good for us, so what's a book you read because you needed to gain a better understanding of literature, your work, history, etc. Um, so I have to be honest, I usually don't read things to be better informed, I just end up being better informed by reading. Um, I don't have like the most like prestigious goals when I'm reading, <laughs> but I did read, um, from Where You Dream. It's the process of writing fiction. It's by Robert Olin Butler. The book was recommended to me by a professor when I was doing my senior project um, last year and I read it because I was working on a fiction novel myself and I still do occasionally although not very often but I read it and I was happy to even though it is very conflicting honestly um, I wouldn't say it's the best book to read if you're looking for tips. That is my cat scratching herself. Okay. Anyway, it helped in some ways and in other ways it just kind of confused me, but that was a book that I tried to give a go and I finished it, so... The fourth prompt is The Treadmill. Um, it's all about endurance. What's a difficult or long book that you powered through? Recently I've been talking a lot about long books that I've gotten through because I've been reading a lot of long books, um, including The Name of the Wind and now The Wise Man's Fear. So I decided not to go with that side of things and instead go with the difficult book um, that I've read. The book I chose for this was The Invention of Solitude by Paul Auster. This is a nonfiction memoir. I don't read nonfiction really at all. Um, and I read this for a creative nonfiction class that I took. I really enjoyed it. I also read some Michael Ondaatje that I enjoyed, but um, I chose this one as being a difficult book that I read because the, 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 the second half of the book is written in a very eccentric sort of way. It's very artsy, um, hard to grasp exactly what is happening because there seems to be like no time in place. The timeline is just everywhere. One minute he's here, the other minute he's talking about this place over here. It's just a lot and um, I, I did really enjoy it but it wasn't an easy book to get through so that's why I chose that book and I haven't really talked about it a lot so I figured this would be a good chance to talk about it. The fifth one is Lat Rose. Um, I really feel like a newbie, but I have no idea what that is, so... But the prompt is, this is all about feeling good about yourself. What's a book, an author, or a genre that you read because it makes you feel good or brings you joy? Yeah, so don't read a lot of happy books, but when I am feeling a little bit down, I usually reach for Rainbow Rowell or I just like crave her books a little bit. In fact, I'm about to do a little bit of a haul. I think when I do my September wrap-up, which is only one book, guys, I'm going to do a little bit of a haul of the books that I've picked up thus far, and um, Wayward Sun is one of them, so stay tuned for that uh, because I'm really excited about that. But anyway, I do read Rainbow Row when I'm feeling down, even when I'm not feeling down. I mean, she's just a great writer, but she's also a very upbeat, very colorful writer, so that's why I think I crave her. And I also, I crave romance, um, because I think when you're feeling down, you're missing, like, a connection, maybe a little bit, sort of. Um, and romance sort of always has those really deep character developments, even, even if they're not the, um, the romantic relationship. Romance novels always have like best friendships and like sisterhoods and like all that kind of stuff usually um, which is fun to read when you're a little bit down. Number six is squats which I cannot even do one of. I know that for sure. I might not know what lat rows are but I know that I can't do squats or probably anything else in this list so what am I talking about? Anyway, this is That Heavy Weight Can Get You Down. What's a book that you found depressing but you pushed through? Um, 
Well, obviously, as you probably could tell from my other answer, I tend to avoid books that make me sad, but there have been a couple. First one is More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. Definitely More Happy Than Not made me um, less happy than not. Yeah. Uh, didn't, didn't enjoy that for my mental health. And it was really just like a trippy book, um, to be honest. Like, throughout the book, I was confused. I was kind of disgusted. I was sad. It was just a very confusing and dark time reading that book. Um, I guess it did what it tried to do. I definitely think he's a talented writer, but um, wouldn't read it again. Uh, the next one I chose was All the Bright Places. I mean, of course this is going to be on this list. Like, the fact that I even read it surprises me because I don't reach for those kind of books. It was a very good representation of what depression feels like. Um, in fact, I think it was the most accurate portrayal of depression I've ever read. But at the same time, do you do I really need to be reading about that? Probably not. You know, I don't think it helped me in any way. It made me very sad. It's pretty sad. I was pretty messed up for a couple days. But anyway, yeah, that's that's another book that made me pretty pretty depressed. And the last one I chose, which is a little bit of a different one, is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This is actually a sci-fi. I believe it's categorized as a thriller, too. Maybe even a horror. Um, but <laughs> it shouldn't make you depressed. However, it did make me a little bit depressed. It, it's very existential, very gritty. It has you thinking all the time about the world and your place in it. And, like, what would happen if, like, you were replaced by you, like, basically it's just a whole bunch of questions about what makes you you and how easily could you be replaced so it's it's kind of a depressing book I have to be honest um that's why I thought of it even though it's a little bit of an unusual pick the next prompt is bicep curls so I'm assuming you just I don't know anyway so it's easy to overdo these that's what this one says and it says name two authors you've read too much so this is very easy. I've read all of Sarah J. Mass's books apart from the novella from Throne of Glass just because I didn't know it existed until I was practically done with the series and at that point like I just didn't feel like it and everybody I've talked to even though they tell me yeah go and read it they also say like oh you should have read that like books ago. Uh, the next one is Kelly Armstrong. So I have talked plenty about the fact that her um, the Darkest Powers series was my favorite series growing up, and so anytime she publishes a book, well, usually, I will buy it and I will read it. So I have read her um, Omens, her Canesville books, not all of them. I read the first two. I have read, obviously, all of the Darkest Powers series, universe books. I have read all of her Rockton books, which is her adult mystery thriller series. Um, obviously, she's most well known for her Women of the Other World, I think it's called. Um, and I have not read that series, which probably makes some people think, like, you haven't read Kelly Armstrong then, which you might be right. But um, comparatively to other authors I've read, I've read a lot of Kelly Armstrong. Um, so, okay, the next one, number eight, is Tricep Dips. I literally have no idea what that is, and I'm not going to Google it because there's no need for me to know. But it says the triceps are too often ignored. That is so true. All muscles in my body are so easily ignored. I took the elevator one floor up today. Not even joking. I did that. So it says name three authors that you need to read more. So first one, I came up with Jay Kristoff, and you might be like, what? You've talked about Jay Kristoff like forever. But I have actually only read his Nevernight series, and I actually still need to read Dark Dawn because my friend has not yet read God's Grave. Hello, Emily. Um, so I need to wait for her to finish that before I can read Dark Dawn. But anyway, that is the only series of his that I have read, and I hope to read Illuminae, which is now sitting on my desk, so I have pressure to read it. I'm hoping to read that, and I'm also hoping... Man, there's another series that he writes. Aurora Rising? Is that the series? I think it might be. Um, he, he's just written a lot and I haven't read most of it so it's time for me to read that. The next one is Libba Bray. Um, I read The Diviners a couple months ago 
it was in one of my wrap-ups and I talked about loving it because it was a great book but that is the only book of hers that I've read and I've heard really interesting and good things about her Beauty Queens if you've read it then let me know what you think of it um, I've heard great things about that and I've heard really good things about A Great and Terrible Beauty and I just think that from reading The Diviners I can confidently say that she's a very talented writer I mean her settings considering it's a historical fiction sort of fantasy very well done so obviously she does her research she's committed to her characters she knows them um, and I just think anything else of hers that I would read would probably live up to that standard although I'm not sure if you've read a lot of Libba Bray and you disagree or you agree I would be curious to know um, but the last person is Victoria Schwab I'm really embarrassed about this one, to be honest. So I follow Victoria Schwab on a few social media platforms, and I have never finished one of her books. So you might see A Darker Shade of Magic up here, um, and A Gathering of Shadows, because I got A Gathering of Shadows for a few bucks at Ollie's one time, and I did get about halfway through A Darker Shade of Magic, but I, it, that was a few years ago, and I think something happened, and I just lost intrigue i just fell off of reading it and i've never picked it up again which i'm so sad about and i have the archived city of ghosts i've heard wonderful things about that the cover is incredible and there's just so much of hers that i'm really itching to read just and i just haven't yet the last part of this tag is to tag people um and i want to tag all of you who are watching this trust me i'm genuinely tagging you um, if you are watching this and you are enjoying this and you've made it this far, then thank you for making it through the rambling that I just did in this video. It was very difficult to find people who hadn't already done this tag, but I tagged Marissa Curtis and Mike Reads Things. They're both awesome, so check them out. If you are new to my channel, then you wouldn't know this because I said it in another video, but I'm going to Gettysburg this month. In fact, next weekend, or this weekend. Oh my god, it's this weekend. Anyway, I'm going to Gettysburg this weekend, and I am planning to do not one but two different videos. So one where you can kind of see us eating and maybe going to a couple museums and just walking around the town. But I also have another video planned, hopefully, um, of like a ghost hunting sort of night activity video. And maybe going to a haunted orphanage. I just have to figure out how I can film that in the dark, which hopefully that works out. I'll do my best to make it work for you. If not, then I will be, I will get whatever footage I can and talk you through it. But anyway, those are two videos that I definitely know are going to happen. I also, like I mentioned earlier, am planning a spooky wrap up, which means that I will be reading all horror mystery thriller this month and I will tell you all about them at the end of the month in costume, hopefully. Oh, I also really wanted to thank you guys. Um, we hit 200. I think it was yesterday we hit 200 and I was so excited. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you're new here, please comment, please introduce yourself. I just really wanted to thank you for liking my content and sticking with me and even if you're a silent viewer, just viewing it all and deciding that you liked enough to subscribe means a lot to me. So thank you very much. Anyway, I don't want to ramble for too long because I've been talking for about half an hour. Um, you won't see a half an hour worth of stuff, hopefully, but that's how long I've been rambling on. <laughs> so, I'm going to go maybe make myself some tea, um, enjoy the fall weather, and plan my next video for you guys. Hope you have a great week. Bye!